Today is another classic Telosif Tech Day because once again, Apple has done something, a lot of people don't like it, and I'm here to defend it. Not because truly I'm a sheep deep down, but more because I truly believe Apple is in the right, and I believe there is a huge dogpile-like mentality against Apple with the Apple Card. And in today's video, using facts and logic, I plan to argue as to why the Apple Card is not a horrible credit card. In fact, it's a very decent credit card that I think is set up to perform very, very well against its competitors. And the most fun part about all this is the fact that we don't really talk about credit cards on this channel ever, but because Apple is branching into new categories, into new genres, I get to do more research into new topics, into new subjects that I don't normally talk about. I get to learn a lot, we get to talk about things that we don't normally get to talk about, and, and I've been really looking forward to making this video because I've learned a lot about other free credit cards out there and paid credit cards out there in the process. So without further ado, here's why the Apple Card is hugely misunderstood and not as bad as everyone says it is. Let's begin. So you're gonna see me make a lot of analogies in this video, and I wanna be very upfront about it. From the beginning, I'm not saying that these two things are the same people or the same demographic, but I'm drawing comparisons. You're gonna see me compare credit cards to headphones a lot in this video because for one, it helps my argument, and not because I think people who are super into headphones are also super into credit cards. I know they're completely different markets. There are people who are really into credit cards and not really into headphones, and people really into headphones Phones that aren't really into credit cards, but there are very much similarities here that I'm using to try to help you understand my argument better. So why are headphones and credit cards being talked about right now? Here's the analogy I'm trying to make. Just like there are audio files out there, and the suffix file, by the way, literally just means to love. So when we say the word audio file, we're talking about someone who's super into headphones. They love audio so much that they can pick apart different inaccuracies and balances with certain headphones and making sure they hit all the right levels correctly, and they can hear very, very minute differences that the average consumer would not be able to hear. I think very similarly, there's a credit card version of an audio file with a new terminology that I'm going to coin in today's video called card files out there. In card files, I've seen countlessly across the internet love to tear apart the Apple card simply because they know credit cards really, really well because they use lots of them. They love maximizing out their benefits and racking up five, six, even 10 different credit credit cards to utilize them for all of their different benefits. So just for gasoline, they use this card. Just for Uber rides, they use this credit card. For all their Amazon purchases, they use this credit card. Or of course, there's your tier three and tier four credit card users out there that spend an annual fee to get really good rewards on a card. But once again, I don't think those annual fee credit cards should be compared to the Apple card, which is a tier two. For those of you who don't know, a tier two credit card is one that is free to use, free to sign up for. There's no fees. A tier three and four are credit cards that do have fees. So you pay an annual subscription to use this card, but of course the main appeal of it is that the rewards are gonna be so good or the points are gonna be so good that it's going to pay for itself and you'll get all of that money you paid for the card back plus extra. So there are card files out there, but I want to be clear that I do not think the Apple card was targeted towards them. And just because you have a tier three or tier four credit card that has really good rewards that you're proud of, that does not mean the Apple card is a bad one. There are lots Lots of people out there that are fundamentally against the idea of paying for a credit card for various reasons and I think we should be accepting of that. If you're willing to pay an annual membership so that you have really good rewards, that's great for you. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think you should also acknowledge that we all have different lifestyles, we all have different spending habits, and for that reason it makes sense that there's lots of different credit cards with different benefits to appeal to different people's lifestyles. Like the Amex Platinum card, for instance, is very, very good for people who like to travel a lot, lots of flying on planes, lots of hanging out at airports. For that lifestyle, the Amex Platinum will likely pay for itself. It'll be a very nice credit card. If you're like me and you go to an airport maybe two times a year, that's not a super useful card. And by the way, oftentimes those tier three and four credit cards try to trick their users into thinking they're making more money back by showing them what kind of things they can redeem with all these points. Like, hey, you've used your credit card this many times. Now you can fly here, here, and 
here and travel. So you're thinking, aha, see if I had to pay for all of these travel tickets, it would have cost me $3,000. So I just saved $3,000. But in reality, those are tickets or those are flights you wouldn't really have made otherwise. So in the process of using your points, you have to book hotels, you have to buy lunches and dinners while you're at the airport. And it gives you the illusion that you're saving money. But in reality, you're spending it in places and you're redeeming it in ways that you wouldn't have used otherwise. You find yourself, you're looking for ways to redeem your points. And that's kind of why they do it and why you feel like you're saving a lot of money because you're like, aha, I didn't have to pay for this part of the trip or this part of the trip. But in reality, credit cards fine with that because they know they're kind of controlling how you spend your money. They're controlling how you spend your lifestyle. Not saying this is all situations. There are people who have to go to the airport like every single week for work. Those types of people truly do benefit from that type of credit card. I'm just saying there are people who are against the idea of paying for a credit card for various reasons like that. And I'm one of them. I don't pay to use my credit card because from all the credit cards I've looked at that you have to pay to use, it seems like they want to control your spending habits. Like, well, you get a lot of cash back, but you have to spend it here. And that kind of changes the way you're brain works into thinking, oh, I better go out and buy things here because of that cash and because of those rewards. It's a whole different playing field, so that's why I'm trying to exclude the whole tier three and tier four credit card argument. It's kind of like comparing lower end headphones to higher end headphones. When the AirPods came out and a lot of people criticized them because audio quality wise, they weren't really much different from EarPods, that didn't mean AirPods were a flop because a lot of people looked at them from the convenience factor and they really, really wanted them. Not because AirPods have beautiful audio quality, but because of how convenient they are to set up and start using. And that's what made them such a popular pair of headphones. One of the most popular wireless headphones on the market today. I think Apple is taking a very similar approach with the Apple card because Apple's whole angle from their origin has been convenience. Anytime they enter a new field or try to work on a new project, it's all about making it as easy to understand and convenient as possible. The Apple card, is no exception here. If someone out there wants to go out and buy AirPods because they're very easy and convenient to set up, they put them in, they're fine with the sound quality, and they're like, cool, these sound really, really good. And then you came up behind them and said, hey, those aren't very good. My Bose noise canceling headphones are way better. They sound better. They cancel out background audio. They have way better battery life. That's why AirPods suck. And the AirPods buyer is like, well, I mean, those are cool and all, but these were a lot cheaper than the Bose ones. They don't have all those cool features, but I don't really need all those cool features. I just wanted convenient headphones headphones. Is one of these headphone users right and the other one wrong? No, they both just bought what was best for their use case. Similar to credit cards, the Apple card can fit in this situation as well. And Apple, I do truly believe, has made the most convenient credit card that has ever existed. I was on a trip to the Philippines recently. You can see the vlog of that trip over on Taylos of Talks. But I was so excited to get the Apple card once I got home. So literally right when my plane landed back in the US, took out my phone, turned off airplane, mode, went to the wallet app and hit that plus button. I saw the Apple card option right there. I tapped it and I went through the application process. It was so incredibly easy and simple. They were just like, let's see a pic of your driver's license, get the last four of your social and your annual income. I entered these numbers very, very quickly. And before I even got out of my seat, wasn't even time to get off the plane yet. I had already been accepted and that credit card had already been added to my wallet and it was ready to use at anywhere that supported Apple. Apple Pay. They also make it very, very simple to maximize your rewards. There's an option in the wallet app that says make default for all things Apple. You tap it once and automatically it sets the Apple card for all of your Apple billing and purchases. That means if you have iCloud storage or you pay for Apple Music or even things that are just done through iTunes, like if you pay for CBS All Access and that billing is done through iTunes, all of that is automatically shifted to your Apple card so you're getting that 3% cash back on all of your Apple services. This includes like if you rent movies or if you're even on the iPhone upgrade program, the 3% cash back applies to all that as well. With any other credit card, if it had really good benefits, you would have to go to all of your different apps and make sure that you change out the credit card number. With the Apple card, it automatically changes it with all your billing. The card, once you're accepted, is automatically added to the wallet app and boom, I went from not having the Apple card to being able to activate and spend with the Apple card in a matter of five minutes. I also bought dinner with it that night and I honestly don't think there's a credit card out there that's that easy to sign up for, easy to get approved for, and easy to start using. Most credit cards you have the whole sign up process 
but I guarantee you seeing how several different banks manage their websites or their user interfaces, none of them were as clean or as minimal as the Apple Card setup, which was super basic, super easy to understand. But also, even if you get approved to use that credit card, you have to wait till they mail it out to you, which can typically take six to seven days, maybe one to two if it's a good credit card company and they have fast shipping. And then you get the credit card, you have to peel some tape off of it, go to a website and activate it or call a number and activate it. And then you can start using the credit card. But never before has there been one that you can apply for and activate that incredibly fast. Maybe there is, and I don't know about it, but Apple Card's definitely up there in regards to intuitiveness and ease. At the time of recording this video, I don't have my Apple physical card yet, but honestly, not having the physical card, as cool as it is, hasn't really been a major inconvenience because the vast majority of places, at least where I live, automatically support Apple Pay. Even places that boycotted Apple Pay for a while have now caved and are now supporting it. The places that don't support Apple Pay are usually not supporting it for a reason. It's not because they're not adapting with the times. It's usually because they have something against it or they have their own app that they want you to use, like Walmart. They could support Apple Pay, but they want you to use Walmart Pay so that they can track your spending habits. But I have bought groceries. I have bought gas. I have bought all kinds of things with the Apple Card in the first week I've been back in the U.S. I've used it 24 to 25 times already, and it's honestly been getting difficult to find a place that doesn't support Apple Pay now. I've been to three different grocery stores in the past couple days buying up lots of different things because we just moved into a new house, and usually any place I go, it's like, oh good, they support Apple Pay, so just double tap with the phone and boom, I'm able to make my purchases, and also the aesthetics of just the digital credit card are pretty cool. The colors of it change depending on how you're spending money. The whole process of paying it off is really simple and easy to understand because it's very, very upfront about how much it's charging in interest if you don't make the right amount of payments over time. By the way, when you hit the pay button, it automatically, by default, gives you the option to pay it off without any interest. It's not like it encourages you to miss a payment, like many other credit cards would either not be very upfront when you're about to miss a payment or not be very intuitive about informing people. Most credit cards are just gonna email you, hey, by the way, better make a payment soon or else you're gonna be charged interest. But as a tier two credit card user for the past three years, it's not an intuitive system compared to the simplicity of the wallet app, which is just a couple of taps and they make it very upfront. Hey, there's no interest charges or if you pay this little, there are interest charges. Here's exactly how much interest you are being charged. And I know some people have seen the interest rates and said, hey, those are kind of high. But honestly, if you're planning on carrying interest with a credit card, I don't recommend you get one at all. And some people do enjoy benefits of other credit cards that provide 0% interest for the first year. That happens sometimes. And that may be good if you want to buy something and pay it off over time. But honestly, I just think it's a bad spending habit if you're planning on buying up a bunch of things and then not paying them off for like months at a time. That's cool and handy if it's 0% interest, but really do not get used to that. As someone who's never missed a credit card payment in my life, I never buy things that I can't afford. I'm always able to pay off the credit card. I have a very, very high credit score. The high interest rate of the Apple card doesn't bother me at all because I know I'm never gonna miss a payment. And with the push notifications that the wallet app gives you by default, you'd have to be pretty stupid to miss a credit card payment with the Apple card. They make it painfully obvious when your next credit card payment is due. They also make it painfully obvious what's the minimum amount you have to pay in order to not receive any interest charges. With another credit card, I could see you not checking your email or not logging into that banking app often enough, and maybe time gets away from you and you just forget to pay it. With the wallet app, though, and how intuitive and easy they make it on iPhone, I would be really, really surprised if you just forgot to pay it off. So that's why I think it's perfectly fine that out of the gate, this is the first credit card Apple's ever launched, and it's not even officially out yet. It's still kind of in the testing form right now, where they're sending out invites to let people test it. I think the low interest rate is perfectly fine because you shouldn't be missing payments anyway. Don't carry an interest on your credit card. And then of course there's the big complaint I've seen a lot of people have about the Apple card is that the rewards aren't that good. For those of you who don't know, 3% back on everything Apple, 2% back everywhere you use Apple Pay, and 1% on everywhere you use that flexing titanium credit card. For those of you who didn't know, my Wells Fargo Cashwise credit card, it's a free one. I've been using it since 2016 
The main reason I got it was because I wanted to have a good credit score. I didn't have a credit score yet. So I figured getting a basic credit card that I pay off every month was a good way to improve my credit score. And also they were doing a limited time offer where they said, if you spent a thousand dollars in the first three months, then you would get like $300 in rewards. And I was about to buy my new MacBook Pro at the time. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll get that credit card, buy my MacBook Pro and get some instant rewards. Cool. That's why I got it. I still have it to this day. I looked up what the rewards were because I honestly didn't really know. It gives me one and a half percent cash back on everything, which is pretty good. But the thing is around here, everywhere supports Apple Pay. It's probably one in like 10 locations that for some reason don't support it. But yeah, pretty much everywhere I go has it. Plus you guys know as a YouTuber and as an Apple sheep, I spend a lot of money on Apple products every year. So that 3% cash back was quite compelling to me. So that's why the Apple card was like an instant application for me because it was automatically better than my current credit card. Plus I have no really attachment to my current credit card. I really just got it so that I would have a good credit score. Now, a bunch of people said when it came out, there's other credit cards out there with way better rewards. Now, as you guys know, I'm not a super heavy credit card user. I'm no credit card guru. So I wanted to learn. I wanted to find out what are all these great free credit cards everyone's talking about that are way better. So I asked you guys on Twitter and I got a lot of responses. There were lots of different credit cards I looked at that you guys gave me and I looked up all the rewards. And I gotta say, after seeing a bunch, there were some that you could make the argument for being better dependent on your lifestyle, but none of them I would say just flat out put the Apple card to shame. If you didn't know much about credit cards and you saw all these people out there saying, Apple card sucks, there's way better rewards out there, you would have thought there were credit cards that provided like 3% cash back everywhere forever. But that wasn't exactly the case. There were a bunch of other credit cards that were comparable to the Apple card. I'm not saying they were horrible, I'm just saying they were just as good, if not a little bit better in certain areas and a little bit worse in others. There was that one card that offered 3% cash back everywhere, but there's always some little problem in the fine print. So at first I was like, whoa, 3% cash back everywhere? Okay, that's pretty good. But then it's like only for the first 12 months, then that drops down to one and a half percent. And I'm like, okay, well, that's what I have now. That first year is going to be really good, but credit cards usually take a good four to five years before they expire. So that's not even the majority of the time you're going to be using it. The most common credit card situation I saw though, and by the way, this is how my wife's credit card works, is 3% cash back in an area of your choice, like gas online or groceries or something like that. And then 2% cash back at anything grocery store, and then 1% cash back at everything. So many people sent me credit cards with basically those rewards, just 3% back in an area of your choice, 2% back on groceries, 1% everywhere else. There were like at least five free credit cards that had those exact rewards plans. And I was like, that's pretty close to basically what the Apple card is offering. If you live in an area where Apple Pay is very much supported, then actually I would say the Apple card is better in a lot of aspects because 2% on groceries is pretty good, but 2% everywhere that they have Apple Pay is also pretty amazing because where I live at least, Apple Pay is at like convenience stores, gas stations, grocery stores, clothing stores. It's basically just everywhere to the point that I haven't run into an issue where it was like, ah, oh, shoot, this place doesn't have Apple Pay. The most common one would probably be like a sit down restaurant where you have to send your card with someone and then they go back and scan it themselves. That was probably the only situation I can describe where Apple Pay wasn't really an option. I'm not going to hand the guy my phone. I don't want to do that. There were of course some other credit cards out there that were a little bit different like Amazon has a credit card that's kind of free but at the same time kind of not. It provides 5% cash back on Amazon purchases but you have to have Amazon Prime to use 5% cash back which in the US at least that's $100 twenty dollars a year so not exactly free if you get the free version of the Amazon credit card then it's two percent everywhere which is pretty good oh and of course the most common credit card everyone brings up is the city double cash credit card which gives you two percent cash everywhere not that that's a bad card but again if you're in a place with Apple pay then the Apple card is very comparable to that two percent basically everywhere plus three percent back on all the Apple stuff where the double cash card doesn't provide three percent on anything so it's good rewards everywhere but it's not great rewards everywhere. And the big reason I think the Apple card is gonna be an extreme success is because none of the credit cards we talked about or none of the credit cards people suggested were ones that are particularly known for being famous or trending on Twitter or trending on YouTube. But the Apple card has. When was the last time Marquez Brownlee talked about a credit card on his channel? That's the kind of hype, that's the kind of attention that makes a successful, very, very popular credit card, especially a free one. I know the aesthetics of a card aren't really 
necessarily a big deal for a lot of people, but it does catch the eye and it does start a lot of conversations. Like the Apple card truly does look very different from most other credit cards out there, you know, being titanium. And while it is free and it is still metal, which is rare, you don't often see a free credit card that is made of that premium of a material. It is going to be a very easy conversation starter out there. If someone is with a group of friends or with a family and wants to pay for dinner and they put that credit card down and it makes that big clank noise, that's going to start some chit chat. You know, people are going to be like, whoa, you a big baller? Are you a big spender? Where did you get that metal credit card? Are you super special or something? And they're going to be like, no, actually it's free, but it's a cool credit card and it has really good iOS integration. And once people find out that they can get a titanium credit card, you know, for free, won't cost anything to sign up, they'll be like, whoa, that was kind of cool. Not something the card file obviously is going to care about because they're going to see that and go, stupid Apple sheep has to get everything with an Apple logo on it. My city double cash rewards credit card offers 2% cash back everywhere. But again, signing up for all of these different credit cards that everyone replied with, while they may have better rewards for certain lifestyles, none of them are as convenient or as easy to sign up for. You don't see the city double cash credit card trending on Twitter or YouTube because not that many people are interested in opening up an account with Citi, going to the website, which is likely not super intuitively designed, having to enter all their private information, wait for it in the mail, and then have to deal with all these Citi emails showing up in their inbox, they gotta download the app, they gotta remember another password to sign into the app to make sure they pay off that credit card. Apple Card's biggest selling point is not its rewards. And honestly, with free credit cards, the rewards you get out of them, it's like tens of dollars a month. It's not really why people sign up for credit cards if you're not willing to pay for them. The main reason is how convenient is it? That's why so many people usually end up just getting credit cards with banks they already have. It's just so that they don't have to remember another password, they don't have to deal with more emails in the inbox and that's the beauty of the Apple card it's not another app you have to download it's not another password you have to remember everything is secured via face ID on your iPhone it takes less than five minutes to sign up for it and start using it and of course the Apple card is shipped to you right away as soon as you get approved and when it does and you do want to use it somewhere it's quite the flex obviously it's quite the conversation starter trust me if it was just a beauty pageant the Apple card would get far more attention than City Double cash because it just looks like, you know, a credit card. And because Apple has seen so much success whenever they put convenience as the top priority with their products, that's why they put convenience as the top priority with the Apple card. Super easy to sign up for. Once you get the card in the mail, it's super easy to activate the card. Literally just hold your phone right next to it. Boom. Okay. It's ready to start being used. The iMessage integration is probably my favorite part. I don't like calling banks. I don't like talking to people or having to talk to a robot and having to key in a code. And no, I'm not willing to spend hundreds of dollars a year just so that I can talk to a person. I'm not for human interaction. It's always awkward. It's always uncomfortable. If I can digitize something or change it into an online chat, I always will. So that's what I love about the iMessage integration. I can just press message. And if I have questions about the Apple card, I just text someone and they usually respond in less than 30 seconds. Updating my billing address, which I had to do because I just moved, asking when the card was going to be here or questions about how easy it is to change the card number. Everything is so simple and easy to use. It clearly is a card aimed at the average everyday consumer, not your card file who's racking up lots of different credit cards and is going to use every single one for all of the best rewards because there's a huge demographic of people who doesn't want to have to keep track of all these different bank accounts, all these different apps and passwords. If you want to do that and maximize out all your rewards, you're free to do so, but that does not mean the Apple card is a bad card. It just means it doesn't really fit your lifestyle very well, but it can fit a ton of other people's lifestyle out there very well, especially people out there who want things to be convenient and easy to understand. And clearly Apple has shown that is a very large demographic. As Mark has said in his Apple card video, don't underestimate the Apple ecosystem. There are a lot of people very in love with it, very comfortable with it. They enjoy using it. And it's not that they love being locked into the Apple garden. It's because what's outside the Apple garden is a desolate wasteland desert with not 
not much else comparable to what they can get in the garden. So that's what I mostly think people are misunderstanding about the Apple card. They're thinking that because they have tier three and four credit cards out there that they're paying for that provide way better rewards, this free credit card is terrible because it's not good for them. When in actuality, it's the first credit card that's putting a huge priority on being convenient and easy to understand. And obviously people out there that already think credit cards are easy to understand don't think that's really worth the average rewards. I wouldn't even call them mediocre. Some people call them mediocre at best. I wouldn't say that. I would say they're completely average based on all of the other credit cards I've seen. They look insanely standard to what else is out there. There are credit cards that have all kinds of catches, whether it be high cash back for the first year and then it goes down or we'll give you 3% cash back on every online purchase, but we're going to make the credit card limit really, really low so you can't really buy anything that expensive. So the rewards seem high, but they're not really going to get you very far. Honestly, I think it'll be a big deciding factor just based upon whether or not you have Apple Pay very much supported in your area. If you live in a place like I do and it's basically everywhere, then Apple Card is a great card. 2% cash back pretty much everywhere I go. But if you're in an area where Apple Pay isn't supported basically anywhere, then yeah, I could see why you're not that interested in Apple Card because you probably have to use the titanium one everywhere you go. And then 1% cash back everywhere is not great. Pretty common across lots of different credit cards, but again, just not the best. So I'd love to know how I ticked everyone off today and why I'm wrong about the Apple Card, why it actually is terrible. So feel free to hit me up over on Twitter or join our Discord so we can talk more about it there. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.